everyone, and, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters. We devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. We are rounding out with day five of our God's Not Done With You devotional in the Bible app. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, then I'm also going to pick with the Devo. The scripture is John chapter 21, and it says this. Later, Jesus appeared to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in a boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, Fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, Throw out your net on the right-hand side of your boat, and you'll get some. So they did, and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, <laughs> Sorry, I just love how savage John is. He says, Then the disciple that Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he had stripped it for work, jumped into the water, and headed to shore. The other stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore, for they were only a, a hundred yards from the shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know that I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he would glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. Peter turned around and saw behind them the disciple Jesus loved, the one who had leaned over to Jesus during supper and asked, Lord, who will betray you? Peter asked Jesus, what about him, Lord? Jesus replied, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? For As for you, follow me. So the rumor spread among the community of believers that this disciple wouldn't die. But that isn't what Jesus said at all. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This disciple is the one who testifies of these events and has recorded them here. And we know that his account of these things is accurate. Jesus also did many other things. If they were all written down, I suppose the world would not contain the books that, that would be written. This devotional is all about Peter. And it says this. Sometimes life is not what we thought it would be. Or maybe it's not all of life that seems misaligned, but a big piece is out of kilter and is seriously holding us back. Somewhere in our grief, we look around us for someone to blame, and, and in the search, we land on God himself. Where were you? Why did you let this happen? If you felt this way before, you're not far from where Peter was in John 21. He's lost his grip on faith and has gone back to what he knew before, which was fishing. Jesus has died in what Peter perceives as a crushing defeat. And even though the tomb is empty, it's not making sense to this fisherman yet. Peter's plan for Jesus has bit the dust, and he's disillusioned. The dictionary defines disillusioned as having lost one's ideals, illusions, or ideas about someone or something. Peter was there. 
it's true that Peter didn't know the bigger plan, and it's also true that he he had some ideals and hopes about Jesus that were merely his own, but so do we. And that's why we are sometimes disillusioned as well. It's why we're close to giving up. And then Jesus shows up on the shore while Peter and the others are in the boats after a miserable and fruitless night of fishing. I love that Jesus comes to people in their doubt and disillusionment. He does this over and over. I love that he tells them to do something that seems ridiculous, that if they cast the net on the right side of the boat, they will find some fish. Well, the disciples do what he says, and suddenly everything changes. The nets are so full that they cannot haul it all in. John sees the evidence, looks again at the shore, and says, It is the Lord. And Peter dives in the water to go to him. What would you do at this point? We usually run away from God when we're disillusioned. This is what Peter was actually doing at the beginning of this story. He was rowing a boat away from the Lord until Jesus, until Jesus reached out. And now he is swimming back to Jesus on the shore. In the ensuing and amazing conversation that follows, Jesus restores Peter's faith, and he never doubts again. What Jesus does to help Peter, he can do for any of us. When we have this kind of conversation with Jesus, he reminds us of who we are. He helps us remember how to trust him again, and he reminds us of how to love him again. Just like in John chapter 21, when he says, Peter, do you love me more than these? Feed my lambs. And then on the heels of that, he says, follow me. Just as Jesus said, follow me to Peter and the disciples in the beginning, he says it again on the other side of doubt and disappointment. Follow me. And he's saying that to you today. God wasn't done with Peter and God's not done with you. As you read Peter's comeback story and the stories of others, my prayer is that you'll trust God with your own story. And the thing that I just want to quickly say on this last um, day of this plan is just how personal God is. We, we know about his power, but I don't think we always experience how personal he is. And I just love to just take Peter in a nutshell right now. Peter was the disciple that denied knowing him three times. And three times, Jesus gave him the chance to say, yes, you love me. And he wasn't doing it for Jesus' sake. He was doing it for Peter's sake. And even how specific he was to meet them where it all started, right? You know, lay down your nets and I'll make you a fisher of men, right? And he's back there. And and he doesn't say, he doesn't just like flood their their, their net with fish automatically. He lets them know of his presence that he's there. And then he says, throw your net over the right side of the boat, for I am seated at the right hand of the Father. He doesn't say that in Scripture, but I just, I just love how specific it is. I love how intentional it is. And I love that it revealed his power. Because, like, this is a, this is a weird analogy. It's just coming off the top of my head right now. But if, if I were to hear some voice say, hey, the wind's going to blow. I'm okay. Oh, nice. It blew. But how do I know that was you versus just the wind blowing? But if it were, hey, the wind's going to blow the hat off of your head and I'm going to catch it and hand it back to you. And that happened. I would be like, whoa, whoa, what just happened? And I just love how specific Jesus is. And, and he is that specific with all of us. And I would encourage you right now, actually, seriously, let's just like stop the pod right now to pray specific prayers and to pray for God to give you sight to see how specifically he's pursuing you, how intentionally he loves you. Just everything is so much more detailed than we can see. I'm going to pray this out. Oh, Lord, we want to see you. We want to feel you. We want to know you. God, we want to pray specifically for specific answers. We want to see you move intentionally and not be maybe just a godsidence or like, oh yeah, of course that happened because that's just the way the world works. And we want to see your intention in our life. We want to see how detailed you are as the artist of our future, as the author of our future. We love you, Lord. I pray that you'll give us a heart to pray specific prayers, and I pray that you'll give us eyes to see how intentional you are with us every single day. Please do that starting right now, God. Give us a word. Give us a sign. Give us a message. Give us a prompt in the heart. Open up our eyes to see you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
Hey Amen, y'all. Now's that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Don't forget that you are God's masterpiece, and don't forget that we love you. We love you, and we'll be talking to you tomorrow. Ciao, ciao, ciao.